Okay, great. Well, welcome everyone. I really appreciate you all being here on a beautiful sunny day. At least it's beautiful here in Olympia. Um, and who doesn't want to be in front of our computers on a beautiful sunny day? So thanks for joining me. Um, we are going to spend the next maybe two hours, probably a bit less of time together talking about um, Beyond Aware, Be Active, our approach to putting the action into DV Action Month 2015. So um, we'll spend today talking about that. Before we get too far into it, I'll go over some logistics and then we'll dive in. So hopefully you can all hear me. So welcome, like I said, my name's Eileen Stoll and I work at the Washington State Coalition Against Domestic Violence. I um, coordinate our prevention work here and also work on the Economic Justice Project. So you'll probably notice that perspective coming through when we talk about DBAM. Um, today I just wanna also note that I've used all these adorable images that are making me very happy. I hope they make you all happy. Um, from a woman named M. Roy, and she has a blog that's called M's Positivity Blog, and she just makes all of her images available for non-commercial purposes, and I encourage you as part of your self-care or whatever it takes just to look through it, um, and I think for sure they'll make you smile. So Joanna's saying that she can't hear anything. So hold on for just a moment. See something? Okay. Okay, I think that that should work. Um, okay, great. So anyway, that's what we are doing. I'm gonna. I might troubleshoot a few technical difficulties while we're getting ready to dive in. So in terms of list, oh, that's weird. Why is that? Ah, there is an image that for some reason. <laughs> has gone away. But anyway, here's the idea. We're hoping that you can listen through your computer speakers, but if not, this arrow is pointing to that you can switch to telephone. Um, that is so funny when it went into screens uh, to slideshow mode, it disappeared. Um, but you can select the telephone option. You probably can't hear me if that's not working for you. Um, so anyway, that is the point. I'm just going to re respond to a couple of these chats um, to make sure that people are getting what they need really quickly around that. So, okay. Okay. So participating, so you can see actually on the previous slide, you can see that you wanted to click on the telephone section. That's what that is. but. I don't know why I wasn't there. Um, but everyone is on mute on this call, but we'd still love for it to be more of a conversation. Um, so if you're brave enough, we would love for you to either raise your hand um, and ask a question, because I can unmute you, or you can type a question into the question box. So why don't we all try to raise our hands? Um, let's see, I see some folks raising hands. Let's try, everybody try it. I would say like 50% of you are nailing this hand raising. What else? Can we get anybody else to raise hands? You might not be sitting in front. Maybe there's, maybe there's something standing in front of you in the computer, but that's pretty good. Okay, I'm gonna lower your hand. So anyway, that is a good way to let me know that you have a question and I'm happy to unmute you um, if that is the case. So I think I've lowered everybody's hands for now. Okay, so now if you do have a question, I will not assume that it was that you were just raising your hand because we asked you to. It's because you want to ask a question. Um, one more thing, just in terms of a tip for you, your control panel might minimize to the side. Mine often goes to the right of the screen. You'll notice that there is an orange arrow that you can click and that'll help you get it back. And that's especially helpful if you wanted to ask a question so your question box will come back. Okay, and then one last thing, um, in terms of attendance, we, um, at the end of this um, webinar, there'll be an evaluation form that pops up, and the very first question asks who else from your program attended. Please let us know, that's the way that we kind of get all of you um, listed on our attendance sheets, and then that generates um, certificates if you need them. Um, and then also, we of course want to hear about how this went for you or anything else that you want to share with us. 
In terms of technical assistance, Becca has kindly agreed to help out. So if there's something that um, you can't get troubleshooted by me or that you just don't want to ask because um, we're in the middle of the webinar, feel free to email Becca or call her at that number. Um, so thank you to Becca. Okay, so I think that that is it in terms of housekeeping. Um, what I plan on doing this afternoon, again, you know, we'll see how long it takes us, but we'll talk a little bit about our shift from Domestic Violence Awareness Month, which is sort of the history of, of the month, to moving towards an action month. Then I'll share with you um, Wiscative's plan for DVAM 2015. Then we'll talk with a couple of folks from programs, and then we'll have time for questions and comments at the end, but also I'm really happy to answer questions throughout. So don't feel like you have to wait until the end. If you have a question, feel free to raise your hand or put it in the question box. So awareness versus action. So why take action and why beyond aware? Um, you know, I have to acknowledge that Wiscative has never really taken on DVAM before. So you know, this is our first crack at it. So I just want to acknowledge that, that you all have been doing this for years. Um, and many of you have the action approach. Um, but we really felt like if we were going to dive in this late in the game, that we should really come at it from an active perspective. Um, and I'll share with you an article that sort of um, gets into that. But for me, I just have this real, you know, I think we all got into this work because we want to actually prevent domestic violence and we want it to stop. And so for me, action makes a lot more sense um, than being aware because I think people are aware. And we'll talk more about that. So um, this article that I've linked to is so helpful. It actually, you know, is one of those things that often people link to articles and it's like, oh, it's so long and you're not, you have to, you know, read it forever to figure it out. This is a two-page article that you will get so much out of if you have not checked it out. Um, I found it to be incredibly helpful and just rich and full of um, just really well-sound, you know, reasoning around why we want to move towards action. So the point of this article, and again, I encourage you to, to check it out, is, um, that awareness raising is sort of the thing right now, right? You see all the ribbons, um, and you know they say that we're living in something of a golden age of awareness raising. And what they found is that actually awareness raising doesn't um, actually lead to all that much. It doesn't have a whole lot of accomplishments attached to it. Um, folks are saying that for some reason the link is not working, so I will get you that link um, when we send out an email after this that has the PowerPoint attached. I'm not sure why it's not working, um, but we will be sure to make it work. Um, but what they say in this article is that, you know, we've known for over 50 years that providing information doesn't actually change behavior. But we keep doing it because it feels like it's the right thing to do. You know, I mean, I totally understand that. Um, but what they found is that there's lots of reasons why people do what they do, and lack of awareness is not actually the reason why they do that. Um, so, you know, if you think about just saying something is bad for you isn't actually what makes people change their habits. They really have to have a deeper connection to it. And I think that, um, you know, that link is really clear, I think, when you talk about um, the, you know, the decades-long push to publicize the link between smoking and cancer. Um, so, but once we have the awareness, then we need to figure out how to take action. And so, you know, I think where we're at with domestic violence is that if people aren't even aware a problem is a problem, then we need to focus on awareness. And I think with domestic violence, we've actually gotten to the point where people get that domestic violence is a problem and they get that it's something that impacts many of us. What they haven't yet gotten is how do they actually do something about it? So that is what I am really interested in. Um, and then and the article posits that basically connecting the behavior change to some key part of your identity is what matters most. And so if you're able to really talk about, and this again can be awareness per se, you know, where you're saying if you really want to be a good father, then this is what it takes, right? If you really want to have a good relationship, this is what that looks like. So there isn't something, anything wrong with sharing information, but it has to be connected to core values that people have and how they see themselves. So they really want it to be something that they care about and makes them want to motivate to change or motivate to take action or motivate to be different in the world. So I have found that to be, for me, just super 
helpful of a framework. And again, I'll be sure to get you all that link because I just think it's a nicely summarized um, article. So basically the bottom line is that, you know, the TLDR, which I had to Google, by the way, I kept seeing that. So I Googled it and it means too long, didn't read, um, which it actually isn't that long. But if, you know, if you can't read it, the bottom line is that awareness, we nailed it. We did it. We totally did it. People think domestic violence is out there and they think that it's wrong. So I think we can just say check. That's actually not what we're needing. Instead, what we're needing is that people want, we need them to feel connected and that that's what's going to make them take action. And that's going to look different in all of your communities. And you're going to know your community best and how to do that. Um, but I think like for me, that's just a super helpful framework around what this month is an opportunity for. That if we have a month that we have designated as the time to talk about it, then let's figure out how to talk about it in ways that actually move people along rather than just make them aware. So I'm going to pause for a moment. I know that that is sort of just, that's a, maybe a new framework for some of you. Are there any questions or comments before we move on to then what that's going to look like, at least for us, from our perspective. Okay, I will continue on then. So what does action look like? Um, we had Celinda Lake come to our conference. I hope many of you were there a number of years ago, and she really helped us to sort of think about what this looks like. And for her, she talked about be effective in your messaging, choose messages that resonate with your community, and bring those folks into your into the conversation. The link here, which hopefully works, if it doesn't, again, I'll fix it in the PowerPoint that we send out to you. That is actually a video of maybe like five minutes, I think, of her speech or her presentation at the conference. But it's just a helpful way of framing how she thinks what she's done polling and figured out what actually makes people um, stop and listen around domestic violence. And she found core messages that resonate. Um, for me, the messages that resonate to me are ones that are hopeful and ones that are about prevention. And so that, of course, is what I am super excited about and what I want to have conversations with folks about. That might look different for your community. And so, you know, today, again, we're going to show our approach from Wiscative, but if your approach needs to be something different, like if you feel like there isn't safety in your community and you can't even go to prevention yet, but you need to make people take action to create more safety, then that's, I think, what your messages can be about. I encourage you to still watch the video and see what her messages are that at least, you know, did well with, with people that, um, she called voters, but which is just the general public. Because I think that you can frame really any message into that framework that she's created. Um, but ultimately, you know, I really want you to choose something that you're excited about and that your community is excited about, because that's what's going to be most successful. So here is our big reveal. So for DVAM 2015, what we're putting out and what the products that we're going to give to you as tools this is the theme, love like this, together we can end domestic violence. And this came out of two things, so for some of you astute watchers out there, um, love like this is a blog series that we have on our Can You Relate blog, um, which really is about putting forth a vision of how we want relationships to be, so a love like this. And then they're accompanied with the not like this. And so we have six different series, um, or sorry, six different posts in the series, beginning with asking out, going through making a move, the whole idea about keeping in touch, whether too much texting or any of that jealousy, all the way up to breaking up. And so there's sort of like a, you know, bookends of beginning of relationship, end of relationship, but all of those things are what it takes to basically have a healthy relationship. So that's sort of the model that we're putting out there is this hopeful message. And then we've also taken our tagline from a refuse to abuse campaign, which is together we can end domestic violence. So we're hoping that those messages can be helpful to you all. We have this graphic that will be um, you know, available to you to really use and how, however you like. Um, we'll be making, I'll talk about what the, what the tools are, but this will be something that you can really tailor and make your own. So that is our approach, and all of our materials will be in line with that. 
So what that looks like is you really want you to go and engage your community. Um, I was joking that is it a coincidence that there's four frames of violence prevention in four weeks in the month of October? I don't think so. So, you know, our approach that we're suggesting is to take a different frame each week and focus on that with your community. So the four frames of violence prevention that we've come up with here at the coalition, and this, um, for those of you who have seen the prevention guidelines that we sent out recently, these are in line with that. But they are address root causes of violence, shift culture, build skills, and promote healthy relationships. So what we think a, you know, a good approach might be is that each week you sort of tackle that and what that looks like in your community. So if you found, for example, that in your community um, there's a lot of anti-immigrant sentiment, you could really go in with that address root causes of violence and talk about the link between that and uh, domestic violence. Or if you've, no, you know, if you've noticed, there's been a lot in the news about police brutality and the African-American community being particularly targeted by their violence. So is there a way to, to have that conversation in a way that really begins to open up the conversation around mul multiple oppressions and how that keeps all of us less safe? Um, and you know, the other way I think you could really think about it is around homophobia. You know, if you want to have um, a community meeting about ending homophobia and really making room for people to be who they are, which then doesn't keep them trapped in abusive relationships. There's all sorts of things that you could do. Um, you know, we could spend lots and lots of time about this, um, you know, how you can fight for equality, all of that. Um, but ultimately, if you took each of these each week and had a different conversation or community meeting or tabling event or, you know, vigil, or whatever it is that you have planned, if you can work it into this framework, I, you know, again, that's the framework that we're putting forward. Um, similarly, with shifting culture, you know, really encouraging people to have conversations about relationships is a big shift. Um, shifting the dynamics about what it means to be a man, what it means to be a woman, talking about gender fluidity, all of those are conversations that really help move us towards a less oppressive society and one that also values each and every human being. Building skills, you could do a community workshop on healthy relationships. You could do even one on breakup summits, you know, really start people off on the right foot that even if their relationship ends, how can they end it in a way that actually sets them up for a good relationship in the future? Um, there's lots of resources out there for that. And then finally, promoting healthy relationships. You all do this great, um, but can you do it in a, you know, in a way that really encourages folks to take action? So the materials that you'll get, there'll be some available at the conference, and I'll talk about what those are, and then there'll also be materials um, that we'll make available on the website. Um, so you'll get stickers because who doesn't love stickers, but in terms of just having conversations when you're tabling events, it's nice to be able to give something away. So we'll give each program um, a little kit that includes these three things. So it'll include a bunch of stickers that are modeled on the Love Like This, and there'll be different ways of sort of looking at that information. You'll also get Love Like This posters. Each program will get a set of six posters. And so, you know, one of my big ulterior motives is to get rid of all the, you know, oh my gosh, I had so many of these in my office at one point. Um, you know, you know the posters that are like of the woman cowering in the corner with the black eye. Um, usually maybe it's like a dark purple background. I don't know. It's like they're not very happy posters. Um, I would love for you to get rid of those posters and instead replace them with happy posters like the Love Like This posters or really anything is better than those. But um, we'll be making those available so you all get a tube of six posters that are each of the um, the posts in that series that you can hang up and um, will be conversation starters. And then finally, we'll give you um, sets of How's Your Relationship cards that you get to give away, that you could have community meetings and say, you know, we're going to practice. So maybe have one where you have it at a school board meeting and you talk with the folks on the school board about how to have those conversations with the young people in their lives. Or maybe you have an evening where you do parents and kids and they come and you actually both get into groups and do it together. Um, you know, figure out what your community really wants and then go for it. And I, the nice thing about those How's Your Relationship cards is that they're developmentally appropriate. 
depending on which age group you have. Um, and so it can really, you can really tell your, your conversations to who is in front of you. Um, so hopefully those will be helpful things just in terms of having things to give away. People love getting things um, when they come to your, to your meetings. And then it also is something that's a lasting impression of how to have those conversations in an important and meaningful way. And then in terms of the materials available online, um, so we're going to have four blog posts, again, on our Can You Relate blog on each of the prevention frames. And I see those being helpful to you in that they might just give you an idea for what you can do in your community, but also that you could take that and then tailor it to an op-ed or tailor it to a call to a call for action in your community, um, but that we will figure out ways to address each of those four frames, so the addressing root causes of violence, shifting culture, building skills, and promoting healthy relationships, and make it really clear what an action is that you can take on those. We'll also have a handout on different community meetings that you can do during the month. Again, we'll probably have it um, so that you can do four different weeks worth of events. And then we'll have Facebook, Twitter, Instagram friendly pics. Um, so Reed is actually busy working on creating um, pictures that you can change your profile pic to or that you can post on Instagram that just you know work for that format, but that also help to promote the message that you want. And then we'll also send out um, fatality review stats. So every September, Jake makes available um, stats that are specific to your county of, of, I'm sorry, fatalities and deaths related to domestic violence. And so this year what we've decided to do is partner together to create a one-pager on how to take action with those stats. So oftentimes people have done vigils um, and other ways to honor their lives, and we certainly want that to continue. But we also wonder if there's a way to take more action and really call on our community to end the violence and figure out ways to move forward while honoring the victim's lives, but also while moving forward. So someone asked, um, when is the September conference and how do I get an invite? So, and I should have mentioned on the last, here I'll go back real quick, um, on the last one, I, you know, I really am interested to hear if nobody's attending the conference because we're trying to, of course, it's much easier for us to, um, to give you them in, in person. So if you're not attending the conference, please let somebody, um, have somebody contact me and we can figure out a way to get you the, the stuff that you want. In terms of getting the Facebook, I'm sorry, the conference invite, um, it's posted on our website. You're welcome to go to just wiscativewscadv.org. And if you look at events, um, the conference is there and you can register there. I'm also happy um, in the email that we send out, I'll make a note to make sure that I send a link to the conference. Other folks are asking, when will the blog posts and Facebook, Twitter, Instagram pictures be available? So the um, blog posts, I am not sure if those will honestly will be available before they post during the month. I'm going to try my best, but I'm not sure if that's going to happen. But so for sure, those will be ongoing in the four weeks of October. Um, in terms of the Facebook, Twitter, Instagram pics, those will be available the week before um, October 1. So those will be available for you then. And the FR stats, I actually saw that Jake was on there. Um, so I'm just going to unmute you, Jake, in case there's anything. But I think the one pager will be available same week as everything goes live on our, um, on our website the week before October. So Jake, I've unmuted you if you want to say anything differently about that. Maybe he can't hear me. Um, so that's our plan. We'll see. Jake and I are sort of, we're going to frantically work together um, to make that happen. But um, I anticipate that the week, let's see, I think it's the week of September 27th, um, everything will be available then. So I hope, let's see, I'm making sure I have everything. Okay, great. Okay, so again, let me know if there's any other questions that you have about that. Um, and you know what, I'll, I'll put, again, a, I'm making a note to put the link to register for the conference um, right now. Okay, great. Um, and you know, the other thing that in terms of the, the 
fatality review one pager is that there's some really good examples out there of folks doing this. And so, and actually, Susan, when you start, you could maybe actually talk about how you all have used that in your community. Um, but we'll also highlight what other programs are doing because there's just no need to reinvent the world wheel, especially in such a great state that is full of people doing amazing work. So, and then um, just to let you know, give you a heads up, we'll really want to hear what you think. Again, like I mentioned, this is our first crack at this, so we're learning and we're just sort of, we're trying what we think works, but we want to know what you think works. So, um, in, in November, there will be a survey coming your way and we really want to hear from you um, if you feel like we deserve nachos or if you feel like we deserve, you know, like sprouts, whatever, on the scale of that, sprouts to nachos. Um, that's what we want to hear from you. Let's see. Okay, and Jake said yes, the DVFR, um, the fatality review stuff will be available the last week in September. Perfect. Thanks, Jake. Okay, so I think that's sort of all that I had to lay out um, before I kind of move forward. I'm just wondering if folks have any other questions or just want to talk about the approach or anything like that before we move on to our lovely guests. Okay. All right, well, we'll move forward again, but feel free to ask any questions as we continue to move along. Okay, so I would love to um, bring in two great folks from around the state. Um, Susan Marks is from Bellingham and Jessica Gaver is from Tacoma and both of them are going to share their plans for DVAM. And if you don't have your plans set yet, don't worry. That's sort of why we're trying to do this in July. But sometimes when you ask people to think about it, they've already thought about it. So Susan and Jessica are going to share their plans um, that will hopefully help you think about yours. So Susan, I'll unmute you to start and then you can go ahead. Okay, can you hear me? I can hear you. Great. Thanks so much for being here. Um, okay, yeah. So start just introducing myself to everyone. I'm Susan Marks and I'm the director of the Bellingham Whatcom County Commission Against Domestic Violence and just a quick note for people because I think we might be the only county in Washington that has a commission. Maybe Pierce County still does. So we're a joint city of Bellingham and Whatcom County Commission and it's made up of 28 members and they're all leaders in our community and our role is we do two things all really both related to the community response to domestic violence and one is we work on systems and how systems respond to victims, children, offenders of domestic violence. And then we also work with our general community. This is where DB Action Awareness Month comes in. Is We work on how will the general community respond to a victim, offender, or child impacted by domestic violence. So we don't do any work directly with clients, with victims, with children impacted by domestic violence, or with perpetrators. We work with all of those people who do work directly with those people. Um, so, and we were formed in 1998, and since then, we have every year hosted events for Domestic Violence Awareness Month, and some of them were really nice. They're mostly vigils, um, and we realized about two years ago, we just started thinking about the amount of effort we were putting into those events and who was there, and that most of them were our partners in this work, um, and that we were preaching to the converted, and that um, we just wanted to have a different approach. So, last year, we piloted our first effort at not doing a vigil and instead doing a community-wide messaging campaign and encouraging members to take action. So we started taking that kind of leap last year where everything we did, we were encouraging people to take an action to do something to prevent domestic violence or to promote healthy relationships. And um, we learned a lot about what we could do better and differently, and I think we also did some things really well. Um, so this year, we have had an outreach and engagement committee meeting throughout the year and these people are, a lot of them are members of our commission and there's some other com um, community members and we have developed an outreach and engagement plan for the entire year including October and kicking off in October but not wanting this to happen only in October but year round. So when we were coming up with the plan we were asking ourselves a couple questions. So one, and this is something I ask myself probably every day, I'm sure many of you do too, is what actually 
will make a difference, what will make a difference in people's lives. It's that awareness article of what makes people care enough to do something differently um, and to make a change. And then we did kind of think about that question too. We didn't frame it that way around awareness versus action, but about what we want people to know. And a lot of our discussions focused around um, not wanting those posters with the woman with the black eye, um, but also wanting people to understand what the full spectrum of abuse is. We think there's a lot of knowledge and awareness about the physical abuse. We also think that's what most people think about. So we wanted there to be some way that people got educated about the other types of abuse or what's a healthy relationship versus all the other types of abuse that can happen in a relationship, so the emotional and the course of control. Um, and then we wanted to connect to something positive. We, for many months, were saying, we were looking for other campaigns saying, how do we connect to something positive? People want to be connected to something positive, not just to the negative of, um, of the black eye. And then again, and I guess our final question was, how do we inspire people to take action and make a change in their community? Um, when I think part of that oversaturation is there are so many problems and so many things people care about, so how do we make them care enough about this for them to take even one action in one month to make this better for um, the people that they know? So we were researching a lot of other campaigns we could start, we could partner with and we're considering creating our own and then um, someone on my committee said, what if we asked Wiscative if we could partner with them on their Love Like This campaign. And so I called Eileen and that's when she said, well, that's funny because that's what we're doing for our DV Awareness Month and so we're going to have all these tools. So we got really lucky that Wiscative did all the work for us. So they gave us all the, they're having all these tools that we wanted and we don't have to create our own resources. Um, so what we wanted were, was this positive message. So we really liked the Love Like This, the focus on healthy relationships on here's what you can do um, and the healthy relationship cards that goes along with that, the idea of, um, here are, here's what you do, here's what makes a relationship good, and then some also like, not like this, like these are things that make a relationship bad. Um, and then that tying it to action month, that was what we really wanted to do was tie it to action, so having some of those things. And the other thing that um, came out a couple weeks ago from Wiscative that we're going to be using is that prevention matrix, so looking at those four levels, the shifting culture and addressing root causes and um, looking at that all of those levels. And so in our committee in August, we're going to be looking at those four and brainstorming which actions we're going to ask people to take to make sure that we have actions that fit within all of those, um, that entire spectrum of violence prevention. And then we'll be having those available, encouraging people to take those throughout DB Awareness Month. So our full plan for DB Awareness Month with our limited resources is we're going to try to connect with people as in many ways as possible. Um, so one, we're going to be blanketing the community and messaging, and this is very Whatcom County, like this is what people in Whatcom County like, is we're going to have stickers on to-go mugs at coffee shops, um, we're going to have coasters at breweries and brew pubs, um, and then we're going to have flyers and stickers and things like water bills and posters and other places throughout the county where just people will see it more often. And then we're also going to be doing some media storms, likely um, once a the social media stores maybe once a week and then um, do also traditional media. So we'll have Twitter and Facebook um, posts and tweets. And then uh, we're having a spot on our local TV station, um, a PSA, and then we're going to um, radio and interviews and print, um, print newspaper articles. And they were having one event. We're having a screening of a documentary at our um, local Film Center, um, and that documentary is going to be With Impunity, Men and Gender Violence, and that was one that was created by Ellen Pence and Michael Paymar before Ellen Pence passed away, so we're going to be screening that documentary. And so then each of these, so our stickers, our coasters, our flyers, our social media, our traditional media, our documentary, everything is going to be tied back to the Love Like This logo and to taking action, and so either people will be directed to our website to take action for action ideas, and we're going to have an, our website is being updated, we're going to have a reporting form where people can report first name, zip code, what action they took. Super simple, but just to get an idea of how many people are doing something. Because we always have trouble tracking what people are doing. And then at the um, documentary screening, will people have their seats a list of actions, and they will be asked to commit and put that, we'll have that on a board, like a visual board. We'll have committed number of people to what action they're going to take. Um, and sort of just this place for people to report that. So it's not... And we're going to try things throughout the county. So a lot of our things, we're not going to, a lot of our things are very Bellingham-centric. I'm sure a lot of you have that thing too, where you have the city that's the center of your county and everything happens there. So we're really trying to make sure that, like, our stickers aren't only in coffee to go mugs in Bellingham, but they're going to be in all sorts of places throughout the county. So at the drive throughs and at the local um, shops where everyone goes to pick up their coffee. So things like that. Um, and the same with posters. And our media storms, we're really going to be relying on our partners to re- to repost and retweet things. So we're going to reach out to all the people who partner with us and ask them, everything we put up, will you re 
post that throughout the county um, or throughout your contacts. And a lot of that will be our county governments and city governments because we're very connected to those. And a lot of that will be other community agencies that we partner with. And then we plan to follow up throughout the year. Um, we want to have quarterly, so do those media storms on a quarterly basis, and um, both social and traditional. Um, we also want to connect and partner with other local events. So again, these are really um, Whatcom County centric, but farmers markets, our art walk, our local dog walk, um, downtown sound. So connecting with those and having a presence at those events with some of these materials and information. And then um, also continuing connecting people um, throughout whatever we do. So throughout the media storms, throughout the local events, or if, if there's another opportunity that raises, continuing to use the same image. So one of the things that we've committed to is we've committed to using the same ideas and the same image for at least a year so that people will keep seeing that and keep really staying connected directly to that one message, that one image, although the action items might change. So people are really engaged, we could take multiple action items. We really want people to start seeing the same idea throughout the county over and over because I think sometimes the first time people might be like, well, that's interesting. But the 10th time they might say, oh, yeah, I was going to do something about that. And now I'm going to you know, scan that sticker with my phone and go to that website and see what information it has for me. And I might even take that action that they encourage me to take. So that's our plan. Um, and that is fairly solid. Um, there's still some things we need to develop. And also, I'm always interested in new ideas or people's, other people's ideas so that we can incorporate those as we go forward, too. Great. Well, thank you, Susan. I got to tell you, my heart is just warmed by hearing all of those things. I'm so excited that um, you already have a plan to use the materials and just that you're already thinking about how to leverage things that already exist with new ideas. And so you're not actually creating more work for you. You're just being more efficient. So I just love that. Um, so what I heard you say was that um, that I just think is a really smart idea that folks can just take with them is connecting in as many ways as possible and having carrying a similar message for a long time. Um, I think that that sometimes I know we totally get caught up in this here at the coalition, but we're like, oh, we already said that. Let's move on. And it's like, we actually, we have to keep saying it. And Part of that is our lessons from marketing and um, advertisements that we often, I think, sort of scoff at. But the truth is that works. And so I think that we should, I love the idea of really taking that to heart and continuing to use a similar message so that we really saturate the market, that we saturate our community, and that people start saying our words um, on their own behalf and that it's actually, we don't even have to say it anymore. Um, so I just love that idea. Um, it did occur to me that for folks like you who are thinking about um, maybe making your own stickers and own coasters and other things that you'll need the images before the link is live on our website. So I just wanna let you all know that if that's something that you want, I am so happy to send it to you um, via email or make it available um, on Dropbox. I'm not sure that I can say that the website will be ready earlier, but for sure I'm happy to get you what you need. So take that to heart and know that if you need it earlier, we will get it to you. Um, and Susan, I just also want to just give you one moment if there's, if you have anything to weigh in around the idea of having really kind of, I, I would almost put it into Courageous Conversations book around fatalities and action and I feel like you all have done that really nicely in your community and if there's anything that you wanted to share about how you see that happening um, either with DVAM or in the future I'd love to hear it um, sure so and actually yeah, I'm sorry there are some requests if you can either get closer to your mic or just oh. louder okay I'll try to speak louder okay great I know I speak also really fast so that also makes it hard for people to understand me um, yeah, so we did do, we did a local fatality review here. We worked very closely with Jake Fawcett um, a couple years ago, and we completed that, I believe, in 2013. And so we definitely used that as the focus of a lot of our media outreach and even one of our DV Awareness Month events, I think two years ago, where everything was focused on what we found related to the homicides. And because related to the homicides we reviewed, a lot of the recommendations, just like the statewide ones, a lot of the recommendations are about prevention. Um, there were definitely relationships that we, in reviewing them, noticed they started when people were young. So a lot of messages about prevention in schools. Um, there's also messages about prevention for 
community members, faith communities, et cetera. So we um, definitely used that tool. And so what we were doing was telling people a story about the homicide. I think that engaged people in a different way to think of these, the story about what happened and the story about how our community was aware that there was something wrong in the relationship and not able to identify as domestic violence, who would tell a story. And then we would encourage people that they could actually, that we could have prevented this, that we can prevent them in the future, and that there are all these tools to do so. And we direct them to um, the Fatality Review Report, which had specific ideas for different disciplines. And so we had other, on our website, another place where we had a list of some specific, um, especially community-based ways that someone could prevent um, domestic violence or address domestic violence. So there'd be things like a school policy or a workplace policy or um, other curricula, like the coaching boys into men curricula, things like that that we would have available for people. So um, that was definitely the focus of a lot of our outreach for probably at least a year and a half to two years after we completed that report. Um, and now we've actually interestingly had a couple of, sadly had a couple of homicides this summer. And so while it had been a while since we'd had one, um, we are definitely looking at those and and ways to bring that conversation back to specifically related to those homicides. What are the things that people around, like what do we as family, friends, and neighbors especially need to know about our local resources, need to know about domestic violence, and need to know about how to get people help and how to have healthy relationships and support healthy relationships. So those can definitely be a talking point. And I think the thing we find, even though they're depressing, they're not positive when you talk about a homicide, is it's the one place where people still care. I think it's, it's hard. People will shut down, I think, in the face of a large number, such as, you know, this many thousands of people experience domestic violence or in this county or millions in this country. I think people shut down in the face of that number. But in the face of one story that happens close to where you live and maybe where your kids went to school or you knew them from your church, um, then I think people still connect to that specific story and, and that motivates them to take action. Thank you so much. Yeah, I think you really, um, I think you're really right on around the connection piece, and that's certainly the research bears that out. That if people feel a personal connection to it, and you know the and the big and there too is that, and then they know some, what to do about it or something to do about it, that that really then empowers people to actually take action rather than I think often we're so overwhelmed by the bad news that we just feel powerless. So I think that's a really great approach, and I just appreciate you all doing that, and I um, I hope that other folks will take that on as well, and I'm sure a lot of folks are doing different versions of that already. So thank you, Susan, so much. Before, um, we'll have time for you to ask Susan questions at the end as well, but if anybody has a specific question for Susan before, we, before I go back to muting her, <laughs> and then um, please do raise your hand or put something in the in the question box. So we'll just pause for a moment. Okay, great. Susan, you were just that clear and concise. So you are off the hook for now. So thank you very much. Okay, so now we're gonna move over to there you are to Jessica from the Pierce County Y. So Jessica, you are unmuted. Wonderful. Can you hear me? We can. Thanks so much. If you wouldn't mind introducing okay. yourself and then going forward. Thank you. Absolutely. So my name is Jessica Gavry and I am the development director at the YWCA Pierce County. And um, our DVAM actions happen um, our marketing and fundraising department are very um, are, are the same thing basically. Um, so they kind of happen out of that department and have a mix of things and of ways people can get involved. Um, last year we switched our language from Domestic Violence Awareness Month to Domestic Violence Action Month um, and just kind of tested it out and we used the theme of be a superhero and we had um, papers at all of our events you could fill out that would say I'm going to use my superpowers too and then um, you know they could write in teach my kids about healthy relationships or other things that they were kind of making a pledge to do so it was a really a social media campaign um, this year we decided to kind of start that early because we do a lot of um, summer festivals and we wanted to have real actions for people to take we didn't want to just be sitting at a table um, handing out program brochures because most people don't want to talk to us about our programs at a festival. So we wanted to have some tangible takeaways. 
So we kind of created that with the thought that we would use them through um, October. Um, so this year we're using the theme of In This Together, which um, works really perfect with the, um, the Love Like This piece that's Together We Can End. Um, so we're kind of trying to talk to people about what they can do to be in this together. So right now we have um, a handout we give out that has five things you can do. Um, and there are things like stop asking, why don't they just leave, um, speak up if you hear a sexist, racist, or homophobic comment, things like that that kind of help people think of some tangible things they can do in their daily life. And it helps us to blend kind of our work around all sorts of social justice that um, if we want to stop domestic violence, we need to talk about racism, we need to talk about homophobia. So we're really able to use this across the board for all of our work. Um, so we'll be using that, and we have a hashtag in this together, and we've made um, like a big Polaroid frame out of foam board that people can take a picture in, and it says hashtag in this together in YWCA Pierce County. So we encourage people out at festivals, and we'll be doing that at all of our events through October, to take a picture and share how they're going to be in this together. So asking them to talk about what specific actions they're going to take um, to end violence in our communities. Um, so we have sort of a full list. We use October to do um, kind of a wide menu of items with the idea of catching a lot of different people where they're at and kind of at their comfort level. Um, I'll just highlight a few of them because, like I said, we kind of have a lot. But um, we start off the month with a kickoff event, which is at a pub um, just down the street from our shelter. And so all day they give, I think, 10% of the revenue to us. But we have folks there tabling. Um, we'll have all of our materials. We've already been using the Love Like This, the little cartoons online. We've printed those out and give those out. So we'll have people tabling, but also talking to tables about what the messaging is um, for the month. Um, we do a film screening locally. This year we're screening the documentary Private Violence. And we're doing that in conjunction, in conjunction with the Family Justice Center here. And that is where we are sort of doing awareness work, but we're talking about the legal system and why folks need access to legal services. Um, we will be doing, um, there's an ice cream shop in Tacoma that has a special flavor for us all month. So we'll be getting a dollar from every cone they sell, but we also will have all of our materials there talking about what it is. Um, a lot of the research, or a lot of the work we do during the month is to kind of connect with people who maybe aren't already really connected to us. So having our information out there, and it's a way of, of kind of marketing, but also getting more people more familiar. We at the YWCA, if there's anyone else from YWCA's, you probably have this too, but we get confused with the YMCA all the time. So for us, part of it is to kind of have people understand who the YWCA is and what we do. Um, we do an event um, called Hops for Hope at a local beer store. And it's hosted by all men. And um, they invite their men friends. And they usually speak and talk about how what they want to do as men to help end violence. So it's kind of a fun event because the vast majority of these events bring women. So we did it kind of really deliberately to get men involved. Um, this will be our second year doing that. And it was very successful last year and kind of brought in some people that were new to us and some people that maybe were, were not quite sure what to think who um, have become good supporters to us. Um, we have an associate board, so our associate bo board is hosting a pub crawl where they'll be sharing information throughout bars around Tacoma. Um, and then we'll be doing, we've been taking clients, clients are working with a storyteller to write stories um, that will be turned into monologues. So we'll be doing um, like a stories of hope monologue. So it won't be about, um, their abuse, per se, but it'll be more about what's happened to them since since they've come to the Y or since they've left or what are some of their hopeful stories. So um, that sort of ends the month. Aside from that, we have um, a cupcake store here does cupcakes for us where we get a dollar from the cupcakes and we get to have materials out. We also, because we are um, the only shelter in Pierce County that accepts pets, we're doing a promotion in the pet stores and in the dog daycares. So we have paws for a cause, and people can buy paws for a certain amount of money. But then we also have information about how we keep families with their pets. Um, that'll be out in about five or six locations. Um, we reached out to the local bookstore, King's Books, and they're doing a window display 
um, of all things related. So we really just try to find as many ways that we can touch people throughout the month. Um, and a lot of them are pretty simple things like buy a cupcake, but we try to then throughout the month list ways people can do something. And so some of them are a lot more um, complicated, like you can talk to your legislator, and some of them are really easy, like buy a cupcake. So that's sort of the overview of what of what we're doing. Um, the Love Like This stuff, we've been using it anyway, so we'll just continue to have it at all of our events. And it's exciting to know that there's more stuff coming, because people love to take little um, <laughs> trash keys. Yes, we have definitely learned that for sure. Well, man, that is very comprehensive. I'm super excited. I want you to keep us posted on what the ice cream flavor is. I just, I see a lot of possibilities with that. Um, I know, we're excited. Yeah, that's so, it's so great. I mean, what I'm really hearing from you, and I feel like other people can really take this and run with it, which is that October is sort of your ticket, right? It's like, because it's been branded as this month, then it gives you access to make an ask in a way that maybe the other months you can't. And so then once you have your foot in the door, then you have a genuine relationship with those folks. So maybe you start by doing something once a year with these folks, but then they slowly but surely become your supporters and are engaged and are having conversations with their friends. And then it just sort of moves on without you. So I just, I love, I love the model that you all have created. And um, it is really nice, you know, synergy that you all are doing in this together and that our theme is together we can end domestic violence. I just think it's so um, exciting for people to think that there's hope, right? That this isn't just a doom and gloom topic, but that we can actually have this joy-filled experience together. So I think that DV Action Month can really be that for folks. Um, and I, I just love your approach. So thank you so much. Um, I just want to pause here and see if anybody has questions specifically for Jessica. Okay. Oh, look, somebody. Okay, Ariella, I'm going to unmute you. Oh, it's other. Oh, let's see. So there we go. Ariella, you are unmuted. Oh, she doesn't have a mic. Okay, type in your question. Perfect. We're, we'll, we will wait. Yeah, so me, me unmuting folks who don't have mics is actually not, I don't have that superpower yet, so. Okay, she's, she's writing it as we speak. Okay, so this, um, Ariella is saying this is for both Susan and Jessica. What events do you both have that are specifically for participants to get involved in, and how much do you involve participants in the planning process? And I assume participants means like program participants in this. Yeah, so she's saying participants, clients, survivors. So Jessica, I'll let you take a crack at that first, and then I'll unmute Susan as well. Um, so we're asking about clients and survivors, how we... Yeah, how they're involved either in the planning process or in the actual events. Um, so so our monologues, whatever it's going to look like, we're not 100% sure, um, came specifically from um, the folks who manage our programs here saying that our clients wanted an opportunity to, to have their voices heard. But for so many of them with confidentiality and any other reason, it's hard for them to say be in a video or um, get up in front of people. So we sort of developed this idea around creating these monologues. So they will be a part of writing their own stories and then working with actors who will actually be performing their story. Oh, cool. um, and we've tried to do that as a way to honor their voices. Um, so we're doing that. We also, our children's program creates art the month before DVAM specifically um, for the kind of month and we have those up at all of our um, events. So we'll talk about that the kids created this art to kind of help tell their stories and, and what they're hopeful about. Um, 
we do that. Um, the other thing, which I don't even know if I mentioned it, that we do um, is a roundtable with um, our Congressman Derek Kilmer, and I think this year Denny Heck will be joining too. And with that, we've invited clients to come and ask questions and to learn more about the policy process and kind of what to be watching for. So we try to kind of include on that end. We don't necessarily include them in the planning, um, but we do ask for input on what kinds of things they'd like to see or how they want to be involved at the beginning, at the front end. Great. Thank you. I'll go ahead and mute you, Jessica, but I'm, I'll unmute you if it comes again. If that way you can click away if you need to. Perfect. And then, Susan, I'm going to come to you and see if you have anything else to add. So, Susan, you're unmuted. Okay. Um, I would say this is where we're different than probably most every other program that's on and that we don't work directly with survivors. So we don't personally offer, do anything specifically with survivors. We partner very closely with Domestic Violence Sexual Assault Services, which is the DD community-based agency here, and in fact, even in the same offices um, as them. And so I don't know exactly what they have planned um, to work with people um, either in their community-based programming or in their shelter for DB Awareness Month. I do know that we, that one of their staff members is a member of our planning committee um, and so certainly we always have people, like for our documentary screening, um, those would be people that we wouldn't charge to attend the screening. Um, it's always an activity that someone, if they chose to do that that night, like bring people who are in shelter or bring people who um, are in their support group to that screening and participate. That's something that we always publicize and make sure they know about. But yeah, as far as like specifically doing any activities related to DV Awareness Month with either support groups or people in shelter or anything else, I don't know exactly what they're yeah. doing because that's not our direct work. Great. And I do think it's just good to acknowledge that, um, you know, acknowledging that domestic violence is preventable is really, I think, in the spirit of, of serving survivors and it's very survivor centered because I don't think there's a survivor I've worked with who hasn't said, I just don't want this to happen to anybody else. Um, and so I do think that it is about honoring your voices. I love the idea that Jessica talked about, about giving people an opportunity to share their voices and amplify them, um, whether it's a video or an opportunity to talk with Congress folks. Um, but I also think just our, our efforts to prevent this for one more su survivor is really, really in the spirit of also serving those survivors that we work with on a daily basis. So any other questions? I just want to say that I just so appreciate, I sort of sent an email to both Susan and Jessica, and then I, we were all supposed to have be joined by someone from the east side, but she wasn't able to make it. Um, but, you know, I was like, oh, please help me. And they, they responded right away that they would without me giving them really any direction. <laughs> so I just want to appreciate them for their flexibility and just for their incredible advocacy and great work. Um, and we're just all moving forward together, which I just, it's, it's so exciting to be doing this work right now. I think we're all at a really great time. So thank Thank you very much for sharing. So that's sort of it in terms of the content. I want to, you know, just make more room for folks to have comments or ask questions. Um, you know, I didn't anticipate that this would take a ton of time because we're sort of just launching it, right? And then I think after, you know, come November, we'll all have lots of feelings <laughs> about how it went and what we wish would have happened and what did happen that we didn't expect. Um, so, but if you have any questions or comments now, I'm, I'm totally happy to engage with you about them and know that I really do want to hear, um, once we're a little bit farther down the road, how this went for you. But we are all super comfortable with silence because we're all advocates at heart. So I am going to pause for another minute to make sure that maybe I can, um, make you uncomfortable by, with the silence and then you'll fill it with a question. So. Um, let me know if you have a question. Either raise your hand or type it into the question box. Oh, so um, Tammy from the Nooksack Tribe is asking a question to Susan, which is that the Bellingham Whatcom County Commission has a very good working relationship with the local tribes. Can Susan explain how that relationship was built? So Susan, I'm going to unmute you. And there you go. You're unmuted. Okay, great. Yeah, I should, yes, I should say, so I talked about our um, 
mission membership, and we have, so we have two tribes in Whatcom County, the Lummi tribe and the Nooksack tribe, and we have a representative from each of the tribes currently on our 28-member commission. And then in all of our different committees, we have different community members, and so our Outreach and Engagement Committee, which plans CB Awareness slash Action Month in addition to other things, um, we have a representative from the Nooksack tribe on that um, committee. In addition to, I think, probably I think a lot of Washington is like this, so there's a lot of different um, small communities, so there's tribes and there's also really small rural communities, and some, a lot of times those two overlap. And so those people are really key to our planning because otherwise I live in Bellingham and I work in Bellingham and I, everything would happen here, as that's true of most of the, many of the people on our committee. So getting people from outside is really key so that they can say, oh, you're doing, um, so you're putting coffee or you're going to put stickers on Starbucks and Woods Coffee, well, what about at our, this is where everyone goes in my community, or oh, you're going to put something in the Bellingham Herald, well, what about this is the newsletter that everyone um, in our tribe reads, and so what are you going to put in there? So I think that's been key to our partnership, um, is having lots of different people, including the tribes and lots of other people who aren't directly related to our work and who aren't directly related to the Bellingham-centric Whatcom County. Um, who can help us figure out what are our resources there and how do we get those people to our events or connected to our campaign so it doesn't become only for a small portion of our county, which otherwise I think it would become just the however many, 80 or 90,000 who live in Bellingham, we would leave out Whatcom County's got quite a few more people than that. So yeah, that's really key and, and I appreciate all the time that they give us because they're doing that for, on, in addition to doing their own work. So. That's really key, though, to us being able to do anything successfully. Great. And I think also just in terms of for folks who haven't had that experience, I think the intention of it is really important. And then following through and making sure that your intention and impact actually match. <laughs> um, and, and I would say, okay, so something else, too, that people say. So I, yes, but people, all these representatives come to all of our committees, and that's what we do really well. Generally, I think in our world is ask people to be a part of our work. And it's really important that I have time freed up so that I can go participate on their committees right. and be in their own task force. And so that, I think, is why people come then to my committees and participate or do it ongoingly is we always want diverse people involved in our work, and we invite them in. And I think part of that key is to us taking the time then to go out and participate in their work, even if we don't, even if it's in that root cause of violence or shifting culture and not just in the specific domestic violence, ending domestic violence, you know, um, box. So right. I think that's really important. It's important to have an organization that supports that. I have a commission and an executive committee that supports that with my time, and that's really key. Yeah, great. Um, and then Susan, Linda has a question for you, um, which is just super, you know, super practical. If there is an inexpensive, inexpensive place that you get your stickers and coasters made. Not yet. We're um, currently doing some pricing on where we're going to get them everything printed. Yeah, we're not doing, also not doing the fancy coasters. So if you're thinking of those like cardboard, nice <laughs> okay, you can get more like the thin paper ones. But yeah, we're actually doing some pricing that's like on our to-do list. Okay, great. Well, if you wouldn't TV, mind letting yeah. me know if you find a company, definitely, um, and then I can definitely. send it out to folks. <laughs> yeah, great. Yeah, that's a great question. Okay, okay, <laughs> great. Thanks. And then Jim asked if there will be more on the four frames of violence prevention coming in the future. So we just released a document called um, Prevention Guidelines that Susan referenced as well. And I'll be sure to attach that to um, the PowerPoint that we send out just so you can reference it. But ultimately, that's a work in progress. We're still, we're, you know, we're sort of trying to figure out how the field um, thinks about that and, and what additions or changes we need to make. So, um, but the four frames, I think, are something that we're going to hold on to. It's just, you know, how we make them practical and doable and meaningful for folks. Um, so that, I think that document will help you sort of wrap your head around what we mean by all of that. Okay, let's see. Oh, one more question for Susan. It says, Susan mentioned including a link to a website on each sticker. Does that link to their site, Whatcom DV SAS, or another? So Susan, I'm gonna unmute you one more time. Okay, so Susan. Um, ours is gonna link directly to our website because we're gonna have a place on our website that's gonna be connected to taking action 
and prevention. And we also have some other educational information for general community members, um, but also very highly featured on our website are our local resources. So DV SAS, Lummi Victims of Crime, the Nooksack Tribe, DV Program 911, um, all of those things we have links directly on our website. So if someone came there looking for help and instead found healthy relationship cards, they would also find help. Great. And that's just a good um, segue for me to mention that you all are welcome to personalize, you know, all of the materials so that people get linked to your stuff. Um, so that, it, you know, if people are looking for help or if they're looking for community specific answers, it goes directly to you and that we're not a middle, a middle woman, I guess it would be. <laughs> so um, anyway, if that's helpful to you. Um, okay. Any other questions? I'm just going to check and see. Any hands raised? I don't see any. I think I've got a couple more slides. So I'm going to move through, but keep, feel free if something pops up that you want to ask, no problem. So I couldn't resist to have a few more of these pictures. They just make me so happy. I think they're just so darling. So I hope that you're not feeling like they're overkill. Um, but I just, you know, this is a new endeavor for us at the coalition. I know that for many of you, this is old hat. You've been doing it every year, you know, since the dawn of time. But um, I do hope that at least this gives you new energy for your work. And if it gives you anything helpful, even better. So, um, but do keep me posted on how things go for you and any exciting events you have planned. So just a reminder about the attendance and evaluations. We really, again, want to hear um, your input on this, but also we would love to know who else was on, um, attended the webinar so that they can get credit for it. So when the webinar ends, that will pop up. Okay, I don't see any more hands. And I think we answered the last question. So I think that's really it, you know, short but sweet, hopefully. And um, I just want to appreciate all of you for doing the great work that you do and um, for embarking on this exciting adventure of ending domestic violence. We can do it um, and stay in touch. So um, keep us posted on what you're doing and I will send out the links I will clean up the links, which I don't know why they're not working, um, and send so send a PDF of the PowerPoint um, as well as the prevention guidelines and anything else that I referenced. I just can't remember. So, but I'll look at my notes. So many thanks to all of you, and keep in touch and have a great summer. All right, bye, y'all.